Hello, everybody. I usually welcome you by introducing myself, but uh, I'm not going to do that today because I don't want you to know who I am, at least at least not right here at first. Uh, that's why I wore my mask. Uh, but hey, I'm going to wear my mask for the, just, just for a couple of minutes here at the beginning of this message, and uh, you'll see why in just a moment. But uh, hey, you know, we're used to masks right now. We're used to wearing them now. Uh, I don't know, about a year ago, if I would have shown up like this or shown up like this at the store or whatever, uh, that, that wouldn't have been a good thing. Uh, I never thought that uh, I'd be uh, able to wear a mask to go into a bank and withdraw money and not get shot by a police officer. But of course, we can do that in this, in this hour in which we live with this COVID and everything. So we're all kind of used to masks right now. But of course, when uh, now this is not the mask that I typically wear when I go, you know, out in the public. I wear one of those surgical masks. But when you see this mask on me, uh, it, it should make you think of a thief, a thief. And uh, you know, this being the Easter season, uh, and I know Easter was just last Sunday, but you know, it's kind of like Christmas. You know, after Christmas is over, we still sing Christmas carols for a while usually up until New Year, and then, you know, then we stop the Christmas carols until the next year. Well, I'm kind of like that with Easter. You know, we, we had Easter last Sunday, but I like to, at least maybe for this following Wednesday after Easter, I like to spend a message just, just talking about things that we would think about at Easter. And so uh, what I want you to do for this Bible study here this evening, I want you to go to Matthew 27, verse 38. Matthew 27, verse 38, and the Bible says, then two thieves, okay, so now you, you know why I have this mask on, so then two thieves were crucified with him, one on the right and another on the left. So there were two thieves that were crucified with Jesus, one on his right hand and the other on his left. Now, before I read on and say any more, I want to ask you a question. Which thief are you? Remember, there were two thieves that were crucified with him, with our Lord, one on his right and the other on the left. Two thieves. I want to ask you in the title of this, this message here this evening is which thief are you? Now, with that being said, I'm going to take this mask off. I can breathe a lot better and, uh, not fogging up my glasses, but uh, which thief are you? Kind of a, maybe a comical uh, way to open my message, but it's one of the most serious messages that you'll ever hear. This one right here. Which thief are you? You know, uh, we are all thieves. Uh, or I, I could say it another way. We're all sinners. You know, the Bible says in Romans 3.23, that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So we've all missed it. We've all messed up. We've all sinned. And, uh, you know, now we may not have all sinned the same way. Uh, but, but yet the Bible says in Galatians 3.22 that, that the scripture has confined every human being that's ever lived under sin. And so we may not have all you know, sinned in the same way, but the Bible considers us all sinners. We've all sinned and missed it, fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible has confined all of us under sin. And, uh, and actually, James 2 verse 10 says that if we, it says, for whoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point is guilty of all. Think about that. God's law, if somebody sins and misses it in one point, they're guilty of all. So maybe you've never stolen anything, and, and maybe you're not technically a thief, but if you've sinned some other way, then the Bible says, I just read it to you, if, if we've sinned in one area, we're guilty in all areas. And, and I didn't say that, the Bible said that. And so maybe you've never stolen anything, but but you're a thief nonetheless, and so am I. We've all sinned. We've all missed it. So that being said, the question is, since we're all thieves, which thief are you? 
or which thief am I? And that's what I'm going to cover here as we go along. Which thief? Two thieves crucified with Jesus. Which one uh, are we going to identify with and be like? So with that said, let's go back here to Matthew 27, verse 38. I already read it, but we'll pick up here again. Then two thieves were crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And those who passed by blasphemed Jesus, wagging their heads and saying, You who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests also, mocking with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he is the King of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him, deliver, let, let him deliver him now, if he, will, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. Now, now listen to this. Then the thieves, those two thieves that I've been talking about, who were crucified with him, reviled him with the same thing. Now think about that. When the two thieves were crucified with Jesus, both of them initially were reviling the Lord Jesus Christ. Both of them, initially. Uh, so at this point, we don't want to be like either one of these thieves. Remember the question of this Bible study here this evening is, which thief are you? Well, right now, I, I don't want to be either one of these guys because they're both reviling the Lord Jesus Christ. But it's interesting, they hung there beside him for six hours for six hours, you know, approximately six hours, and something happened to one of the thieves. And uh, let's look at this in Luke's account. Now, we just read Matthew's account, but to get the whole picture, we need to go to Luke's account, Luke chapter 23 and verse 32. It says this, There were also two others, thieves, led with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him and the thieves, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Now let's skip down to verse 39. Then one of the thieves who were hanged uh, blasphemed him saying, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. Okay, so this one thief is still blaspheming the Lord. I'll read it again. Then one of the thieves who, who was crucified with him blasphemed him and said, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. So he hasn't changed. We don't want to be that thief, but let's read on. But the other thief answering rebuked him, rebuked the, his buddy there. I suppose it was his buddy, this other thief saying, now notice what this other thief said to this thief that just blasphemed Jesus. He said, do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Now notice, he's hung next to Jesus for however long he hung there before he had a change of heart, however long that was. He heard Jesus cry out, Father, forgive them. As Jesus was referring, to, he was speaking to the Heavenly Father about the crowd and the people who had just beat him so brutally and crucified him. And Jesus cried out, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. You know, and, and the other things that, that, that the, uh, this, this thief here experienced in that time before he had this change of heart, I mean, just think how, how that must, must have affected his heart to cause that change of heart. Hearing Jesus, you know, pray to the Father, Father, forgive them. And, 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 and the love that he must have felt coming out of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and he had a change of heart. And notice he took ownership for his sin. He took ownership for it. He said, he said to that other thief, he said, we receive the due reward of our deeds. See, he took ownership. He realized he was a sinner. And he said, but this man, Jesus, has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, so I can see a repentance in this one thief's heart. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, 
remember me when you come into your kingdom. So he had a change of heart, a repentance of heart, and you see him, you see him crying out to the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, whoever calls on the name of the Lord with a repentant heart will be saved. You, you understand that. And notice what Jesus says to him in verse 43. Assuredly, I say to you, Jesus is saying this to this repentant thief. Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Wow, that thief got saved. He got saved right there hanging on the cross. Think about that. All of the bad deeds that he had done his whole life, a sinner, I mean, probably a sinner among sinners, all the sins he must have committed, uh, no doubt had probably committed murder. That's why he was there being crucified. But he had a change of heart. He repented. He took ownership for his sin. And he cried out to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that fast, that quick, he was forgiven of all of those sins. And he heard some of the, I mean, he heard not some of the greatest words, the greatest words you could ever hear from the lips of the Lord Jesus Christ when he says to this guy, Assuredly, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Look at that. This thief had a change of heart. He repented and he got saved that quick. Wow. So now, which thief are you? Which thief are you? Which thief do you want to be? Do you want to be the one who, who maintained that hardened heart and who continued to reject Jesus right up to his last breath. Think about that. Jesus is right next to this one thief dying for him, and, and, and he's, re, he's reviling Jesus, rejecting Jesus, blaspheming Jesus, all the way up till his last breath, and he dies and goes to hell. Think about that. I don't want to be that thief. Let's don't be that thief, okay? So we don't want to be that one, but let's be the thief who repents, who believes on Jesus. Repents means we take ownership of our sin. We realize that we're sinners and, and we, we, we realize that we repent like this thief, one thief did and, and believe on Jesus. He accepted Jesus and in a moment's time, he missed hell for eternity and made heaven for eternity. Okay? So let's be that thief. Let's be the repentant thief. Let's don't be the, th you know, which, which thief are you? Well, let's be the one that repents and, and, and gets changed and becomes a new creation in Christ Jesus. No longer to be a thief, but a saint of God. Just think about that. That, that one thief that repented when he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Just that fast, he went from being a sinner to being a saint. Now, I know that throws a lot of people off, you know, because they think to be a saint, you have to have lived a, a holy, perfect life and, 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 and you know, perform miracles and, and then died. And then, you know, 100 years later, you're declared a saint. Well, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that the moment you, you, you repent of your sins and receive Jesus, you become a Christian. You, you, you become saved. You get washed in the blood of Jesus. All your sins are gone. You become a new creation in Christ and you become a saint of God. And so this, this thief, he went from being a thief to a saint that quick. Let's be that thief. Let's be that one, okay? Again, don't be the one that continued to blaspheme Jesus all the way to the end and died in his sins and went to hell. Don't, let's don't be that thief. Let's be, the, uh, let's be the one that repented. And somebody might say, well, Pastor Terry, is it that easy to get saved just just, just like that thief that God said, is it that easy? It's that easy. Look, all he did, he had a change of heart. He said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And that fast, he was saved. It's, it's, it's that simple. And, uh, and so, praise God. Well, I think you know which, which thief you want to be, the one that repents. But hey, let me close by reading 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9 says this, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves. Remember, if you're guilty of one of these, the Bible says you're guilty of all, but I'm just re reading this list. 
nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, so none of those people that I just read to you from the Bible will inherit the kingdom of God. Thieves were in there. But I like verse 11. It says, and such were some of you. Such were some of you. But you are washed. Now he's talking to people here in Corinth that had repented and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and, and cried out to him and trusted in his name. And, 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 and he says here, you were some of these bad things. You were a thief. You were some of these bad things, but you are washed, but you are sanctified. You are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. And so, so such were some of you. So, so you might've been a thief. You might be listening to me out there right now and you, you've never received Jesus. Well, the Bible says you're a thief. Well, I never stole anything, Pastor Terry. Well, remember, if you've missed it in one point, you've missed it in all. But hey, you don't have to stay a thief. You don't have to stay a sinner. Learn a lesson from this message. Learn a lesson from, this, from these two thieves. Don't stay like the thief that didn't repent. Don't stay like that. Be the thief that repented and, and, and called on the name of the Lord and got saved. So, uh, so I want to encourage you to do that. If you've never received Jesus, do so now. Repent of your sins and tell the Lord you're sorry and, and, and call on the name of Jesus. And if you do that and you mean it, you'll, you'll go from being a thief to being a saint. So, uh, so which thief are you? Well, only you can answer that question. But again, let me give you a helpful hint. Be the one who repents. Well, hey, uh, thanks for joining me this evening. And I think I'll but my, well, no, okay, so this is, this, so before I got saved, I, I'm a thief, I have to wear the mask, but now that I've received Jesus, I can take the mask off, I'm not a thief anymore, I'm, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ, okay, so hey, hey, hope you enjoyed this, and uh, hey, I'll see you next time, God bless you, bye-bye.